Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and by the end of this video we will have this very basic vehicle it's like a car technically not really <laughs> it's more so like a triangle the weird shaped vehicle but we will be able to drive this around we can slightly drift the thing as well uh, right now the settings are not the greatest but in this video we are just gonna simply talk about how to set up a basic vehicle how to set up a vehicle master so that we don't have to retype the controls all the time but so that we can just create ch children out of the master and then just start creating our own vehicles and then in the following videos we'll be talking about how to actually make this more realistic so yeah let's go ahead and let's get started So what I have here is a blank template. Uh, all I have is some starter content and some very, very basic meshes for my vehicle. So what I have here is this piece right here, which is going to be the base for now. Later on, we are going to actually use an actual vehicle model. Uh, but for now, we will start very, very basic because the models in the system don't really matter at all. Uh, what does matter is that the vehicle itself technically is facing in the Z axis. So the forward way should be in the Z axis. So basically whenever you drag your meshes in, the red arrow should be facing forward just like the vehicle should. And uh, basically this is the direction it should be in. If your vehicle is not in this direction, I strongly suggest you export this uh, and import this into your modeling software and re-rotate, uh, re re-angle this thing so that your models would face in the Z axis, uh, positive Z axis for that matter. And the same thing applies for the wheels. Uh, for the base, the pivot point should be at the bottom of the mesh, but for the wheels, the pivot point needs to be right in the center uh, so that whenever you rotate this, you don't get any off axis movement so that this is a smooth rotation uh, directly from the center of the object. Now, to get started with this thing, we need a plugin. And throughout this series, like I mentioned already before, we are going to be using, well, I mentioned this in the preview video, we are going to be using the Advanced Vehicle System plugin. Uh, if you are watching this right now, uh, the day that I upload this, basically, this thing is still free. It's going to be free for the next couple of days. But, but from there on out, it's going to be a paid product. It's going to cost 80 something euros, uh, so roughly $100. Uh, so I strongly suggest just you get this plugin even if it is a paid product at that point because this plugin makes your life creating vehicles much more easier and as you can see in the preview of image it comes uh, it basically allows you to create a whole bunch of vehicles with trailers and all that stuff and this plugin is just so amazing and it makes life so much easier when it comes to creating vehicles then once you have purchased this product make sure you go ahead and install this to your engine. In my situation, I already have this installed. Uh, so you might have to install this to your specific Unreal Engine version. I'm using 4.26.1 throughout the series. And then once you have it installed in your engine, what you can do is go to your settings, plugins, look for the advanced vehicle system, click enable, and then restart your project. So while my Unreal Engine is restarting, here is the Blender project. Here are my very basic models that I have. So I have the, the base and I have the wheel. wheel. Uh, both of these are facing in the positive X axis and the wheel is anchored right in the middle of it. So my Unreal restarted and the plugin is successfully installed. So the first thing before we begin working on the actual vehicle, we need to set up some controls so that it is a little bit easier for us to work uh, with the code. So first I will go to my project settings and I will set up some input settings. So let's go to the inputs and let's start adding some action and axis mappings. So the first is the action mapping, which I'm going to call vehicle uh, let's call this vehicle hand brake and this is going to be on my space bar and then the next one is going to be the vehicle shift up which is going to be my shift key and then the next one is going to be the vehicle shift down which is going to be my control key now for the axis uh, axis mapping we're going to have a vehicle forward this one is going to be my W key. The scale is going to be one. And then we're going to have a vehicle brake, which is going to be the S key. Again, scale at one. 
and then we are going to have a vehicle steering for this one we are going to have a a and we are also going to have a d key now for the a we need minus one so that the vehicle would turn left and then for the d we need one so that it would turn right so those are the very basic inputs that we are going to be using so now that we have those we can go back to our content folder right click and create ourselves a new blueprint class Let's open up all classes and since we enabled the plugin, if we look for AVS, Advanced Vehicle System, it will offer us a AVS vehicle. So let's go ahead, let's select that and I'm going to call this Vehicle Master. Let's go ahead and let's open this up. And this is a very regular blueprint. Most of the things will be already familiar by default. Uh, we have a base mesh and we have the self-reference with all kinds of configurations that we are going to talk about uh, a little bit later down in the series. So the first thing that we want to do is go to our event graph and actually set up the controls. So I'm going to delete the actual overlap and the event tick events and on begin play after the parent begin play we are going to run two nodes the first one is the start engine so that whenever the game starts and this vehicle gets spawned the engine gets ran and then the next one is set shifter position and we are going to set this into the drive by default now that we have done this so let's start working on the controls that we have over here so the first one Let's look for our vehicle. Let's start with vehicle forward and not this one, but we need the access event vehicle forward. And from this, we can set throttle, to set throttle input, and then the throttle goes into the access value. So now this is going to allow us to give our vehicle some gas. And then we need the vehicle brake which then can set brake input. And then again, the brake value goes from the axis value. So now we're going to be able to slow down. And then the next one is going to be the vehicle steering. And from this one, again, we need the set steering input. So the naming convention is very nice for this plugin. All it's like set, set, set. So that makes our life a little bit easier when looking for these nodes. So now we have set up three of our uh, axis mappings. Let's set up our action mapping as well. So we have our vehicle handbrake and from this again let's drag from the pressed and we want to set the handbrake input and on pressed we want to set this to true. So whenever we hold down the space key the handbrake is going to be enabled and then when we release the key we want to set this back to false so that it would release our handbrake. Then the next one uh, so we have the vehicle, um, we have the vehicle shift down. So on pressed we can, uh, what was it? Gear, move gear, move shifter, move shifter position. That's what it was. So move shifter position. So shift down is going to be false for the move up. So we want to leave this at false because this is shift down. And then if we want to shift up, then we again move shifter position but this time move up would be true since we are shifting up so these are the very very basic controls and the very basic setup uh, so at this point technically our vehicle already should be usable and easily drivable so uh, i'm gonna leave everything like it is right now in the vehicles master uh, later on we're going to come back and do some adjustments to this but for just getting started this is going to be good enough and uh, let's go ahead let's close this all off now once we have done all of that let's go ahead and let's right click our vehicle master and let's create ourselves a child blueprint class and i'm going to call this test car one now we want to make childs so that we don't have to constantly keep on adding these controls but so that the controls would be there by default and then we can use the child actors. So the first thing that we want to do in our child actor is select the base mesh and let's provide it a static mesh. So in my case I have a basic car cube so this is my mesh for some reason my unreal is a little bit laggy which is very odd because previously it wasn't. Anyway, so we have our base mesh. So this is going to be our vehicle as of right now. And the next thing that we need is the actual wheels. So let's go ahead and let's add a component and let's look for our 
vehicle wheel. So we have our vehicle wheel added to our project. And again, it's glitching for me for some reason. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's select our wheel. So here is our wheel. And now what we want to do is actually move this into the location where the wheel should be. So in my case, my front wheel is going to be roughly around here. And then I'm going to duplicate this, control W and move this to the other side. Now, if you are using like actual wheels with actual textures and everything, then your wheel is going to be like facing the other way around. This is going to be the back side. This is going to be the front side. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead, rotate this 180 degrees and uh, you will have some tiny issues, but I will explain those in a sec. So actually, let me just keep those the same way as you have so that you wouldn't have any uh, so that you know this, the, the same glitch. You can see that then let's again duplicate our front wheels and let's just move those to the rear end like this so here we go we have the basic vehicle set up and now at this point technically we could try to test this out but before we do let's go ahead and let's add ourselves a spring arm for the camera and make sure it's not a child of a wheel but it's just a child of the base and then also we want to add a camera to be a child of our actual spring arm. So then let me just give this some more values. So like 1000 perhaps, maybe a little too much. So maybe like 700 instead. Let's move this a little bit up and rotate this in like so. There we go. So we have our vehicle set up. Technically, we could we could already start testing it, but we need to provide this info to uh, if you see this error, don't worry about it. It's going to be gone in a couple of seconds. If you have provided the meshes, it shows up to me all the time, but it disappears in a couple of seconds. So now we need to go to our world settings. So these settings over here, and we actually need to provide a game mode for this whole thing. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create ourselves a new blueprint class. And this is going to be my game mode base. And I'm going to call this my GM. We don't need anything in it. We can just simply provide it over here in the game game mode override. So my GM. Now, the next thing that I want to add is a controller. Uh, because the creators of this plugin have provided us with some very cool widget which shows the speed of the vehicle, the gear we are in and all kinds of goodies. So I'm going to go ahead and create ourselves a new player controller and I'm going to call this my controller. So we have that. Let's open it up. Let's go to the event graph and on begin play. First, I want to do an if because if we are in a multiplayer, we want to check if this thing is local player controller so that this thing wouldn't get ran on all the clients whenever a controller gets created but rather than just on that specific player and then on true we can create a widget and the widget should be our vehicle setup hub and then once we have added that we can then go ahead and add that to our viewport like this there we go so we can close this off go back to the main screen and again in the game mode we can change the player controller to be my controller and then the default pawn class in my situation is going to be my test car one so now if we have a player start in the world and we press play we have our vehicle in the world now at this point if we give gas nothing really happens we can't really steer we can't really drive but at least we can see that our vehicle dropped in the world. We can see some of the settings. If we give gas, you can see that it does add the torque and it does add the target speed, but nothing really happens. Now that is because we need to tell the system which wheels are the driving wheels, which wheels are the handbrake wheels, which wheels are the steering wheels. So go ahead and select your front wheels first. And then let's just scroll down till we find the vehicle wheel uh, config and here we can provide that this is the turning wheel since these are the front wheels and if one of your wheels is turning the other way then you can just select that single wheel and invert its steering now I'm gonna add some max steering angle to this 
that's so maybe like 45 that's gonna make my car uh, steer a little bit better and, and more sharper and then I'm also going to select the rear wheels and for these wheels I'm gonna set that these are the driving wheels and that these are the handbrake wheels now once we have done that we can again hit play and now we're gonna have some other issues if we give gas you can see our vehicle is jumping up and down but it doesn't really go anywhere now if you would Pay close attention to the rear wheels, which you might notice. I can't really notice at this point right now, but technically one of our wheels is turning forward and the other one is turning backwards. That is because if we select one of the wheels and look at the rotation, one of them is at minus 180. So technically it is the other way around. So one is at zero and the other one is at minus 180 in my situation. Yours might be at like plus 180 perhaps. So the one that is not at zero, you want it to invert torque on that wheel. Because at this point, one wheel is turning forward, the other one is turning backwards, and we're not getting anywhere. But now, when we give gas, we are moving forward. Uh, don't give too much gas, because you will see that it is jumping like crazy, and it doesn't really feel like anything good at all and you might be thinking wait why is this happening what is this like what is this bad plugin no it's not a bad plugin it's a bad collision so go ahead and open up your actual wheel mesh now if you would look at the collision of this thing so you want to click collision and then show simple collision you will see that this is not a rounded collision so basically you are driving on like a cubish i don't know what this is octangle or rectangle whatever thing i don't know i don't care but this is not a circle so select your collision so it turns light green and hit the delete key it's going to remove the collision completely now go ahead select the collisions and add a sphere collision to this now this is going to create you an actual circle with a way better collision so if this does matches up with your wheel and everything is fine, you're good. If it doesn't, then scroll down the details panel, look for the primitives, sphere, uh, zero RI element, and then adjust the sizing over here. So mine is good. I'm just going to hit save on that, close this, and let's try to play this once more. So if we hit play and try to drive. There we go. This is much better. So now we are actually actually able to drive around. And now, well, the wheels are turning super fast because they barely have any traction and we are like on the ice. If we hit handbrake, it slides a lot. Uh, we're going to adjust those settings in the following videos. But for this video, the last thing is, as you can see, at some point, my car is jumping like crazy. And that is happening on these connection points. Even though you will see that these are perfectly aligned, there is no gaps in between them it still detects some collision. Now, the creators of this plugin have provided some information on, on their website, uh, which you can find uh, in, in, next to the plugin where you purchase it and where it is in the uh, marketplace. Now, they have told that you should go to the project settings and adjust some physics settings, and that way this does remove these issues. And the changes are very slight. What you wanna do is scroll down to the physics section and here at the very top we already have the uh, so let's see we have the contact offset multiplier multiplier this one needs to be 0 0.001 then the minimum contact offset needs to be one extra zero so 0 0.0001 and then the max contact offset again is 0 0.001 so settings should look like this now, the next settings that they suggest to change, I believe this is, has to do something with the falling speeds and etc. The max angular velocity, they suggest you change to like 10,000. And the next thing that they suggest you look for is the terminal, default terminal velocity, and this should be changed to 7,600. Those are their recommendations. I'm going to stick with those because they seem to work perfectly fine for me. So now if we hit play again, and if we try to drive forward, you will see that the car is no longer bouncing on the connection points. So everything should be functioning just fine. 
So that's going to be it for today's episode. Hope you found this useful. In the following videos, we will be configuring our vehicle so that we have some better traction, better steering, better suspension, some gears and all that stuff. So yeah, if you like this video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, uh, leave a comment, join my Discord, support me on Patreon, and I see you in the next episode.